Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm playing with my lights. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to start. Yeah, no, I'm starting. We're starting <laughs> you hot. You spooked me a little starting bit. Yeah. Starting hot. <laughs> so you don't, it, so yeah, it, it's it's very exciting. Just, to, just just jump in. I like to make sure you're really on your game and sometimes the surprise of improvisation is, it works. It's good. I'm on it's my great. game. We are, we're doing something really interesting today. We're talking to uh, Morgan Hancock and Morgan is uh, a, a vet uh, and living with ADHD in the military. And this is something I have wondered about for years and years and years. And so we're going to talk to Morgan about that and about all of the good work uh, uh, that she's been doing uh, since and uh, all as a, a way of continuing our conversation on being a, a business person with ADHD, entrepreneurs and ADHD. It's very exciting. What do you it think? Is. Are you excited about it? I am. I'm very, I like you. I'm very curious. <laughs> I'm very stupid. curious. Like me. Very curious. Yeah. Uh, before you do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list. And we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. But to really connect with us, you can join us in the ADHD Discord community. Super easy to jump in the general community chat channel. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord and you will be whisked over to the general invitation and login. If you're looking for a little bit more, particularly if the show has ever touched you or helped you understand your relationship with ADHD in a new way, support the show directly through Patreon. Come on in. The water's warm. Patreon, it's listener supported <laughs> podcasting with a few dollars a month. You can help to guarantee that we continue to grow this show, to add new features, to invest more heavily in our community. Just visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Thank you, patrons, for hanging out. And, and I should say, patrons, once you're a patron at the deluxe level or better, you can watch the live stream of this show as we record it and get the show a week early. And you would see Nikki working hard to organize her desk setup. I mean I hard right now, right. legit. <laughs> it we, is so, this uh, is so annoying. Like I, I I'm oh, just not happy. You're not I'm not happy. happy. No, All but right. can I just say something really quick I about want Patreon? To. Yes. Um, that I'm really excited about is we are hosting um, several extra accountability sessions in March and in april for taxes oh dear so if you want a little bit of help to get your taxes you know set up and the paperwork all gathered together and you want to work with other people who are working on their taxes because it's a terrible project to have to do <laughs> uh we're offering that to all of our patreon members another reason to join us so that starts saturday march 4th Right. We're going to be offering weekend tax themed study halls to the Patreon supporters at the deluxe level or better. Every Saturday and Sunday through tax day on April 18th, we will be hosting this two hour body double session with a focus on getting taxes done. And then we're going to be hosting extra study hall hours on the 17th and 18th of April, the last two official days to submit your taxes on time. So if you're not currently a Patreon member, this is a great time to get signed up and use some of that extra accountability at tax time. Absolutely. All right, Nikki, do we want to talk about we want to talk about Morgan with yes. Morgan or just about yes. Morgan? All right. No, let's, with her. Let's go ahead and get Morgan <laughs> in here. Morgan Hancock is a commercial real estate agent, entrepreneur, U.S. Army veteran, mother of two, a passionate advocate for the arts and founder of Bourbon with Heart, Inc., the world's first and only arts-focused bourbon charity. Can't wait to hear more about that. She joins us today to talk about her experience doing all those things, living and working with ADHD. Morgan, welcome to the ADHD podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Oh, we have a lot to dig into. I know we do. Can we start with the military stuff? Because this is a question I feel like I have wondered. Uh, I've wondered as long as we've been doing this show is how does ADHD affect 
direct like ser- military service. Well, I the constraints around military service in my head are such that I have a hard time understanding how ADHD would impact you. Can you talk a little bit about your experience there? I can. I can only speak uh, from my experience, but I will say that um, they don't go together well. <laughs> <laughs> Not a marriage in heaven. Huh? Not recommended. <laughs> um, yeah, so I definitely struggled um, in the military. I stayed in trouble a lot. I did a lot of push-ups. I got really strong. So silver lining. Yeah, silver lining. Well, I've, I've lost it all. I mean, that oh. was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly lost all of that. Um, but I did for that time. Yeah, I, I did a lot of push-ups. So what is it did, like day to day? Like, how does yeah. it how does Did it you know you had ADHD? You? Yeah. No, I didn't know, but I should have known um for a lot of reasons even well before that but no i just always thought i was a troublemaker did your commanders your the folks who were in charge of you your bosses did they like it was there any insight was the was the did they have any understanding sounds like no i don't i don't think they care about stuff that Yeah. yeah i don't think they care about your um now this has been a while okay i, mm-hmm. I will say that from what i've seen and read and heard from others the military has it uh, is improving in a lot of ways um but this was 2007 um to 11 mm-hmm. and even since then i think the military has changed a lot but you know i mean we were in war at that time and I, I just don't i mean i don't think they were great you know caring about if you had adhd <laughs> yeah right right, right. Yeah. First of all, thank you for your service because sure. it is certainly a sacrifice that you you made. Uh, what made you decide to to join the military? Well, I was a freshman in high school during nine eleven, and mm-hmm. so it was you know that's just a big time in, in your life, and that was a really impactful event in not only my life but a lot of my peers. So mm-hmm. there were a lot of us who, right after that happened, had kind of made a resolution that as soon as we could we would we would do something and I I thought this was interesting too as I think about this now you know we don't really have if if there's not some call to action event like that you know what motivates young people now days uh to join maybe military family tradition Mm -hmm. or history but you know without that 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 event I I would have never even thought to Mm -hmm. to do it so I'm curious what you mean by troublemaker. What 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 does that mean? Just seeming to always be in in trouble, not being able to follow the rules the way that other people were able to follow them. I was, and we we'll just hop right into this. I guess yeah. I was actually kicked out of four high schools. Mm-hmm. I was in trouble in the middle. I got kicked out of my platoon, transferred to a different platoon. I, I did. I. I, I completed I have my ask, time. I got an it, honorable <laughs> discharge. So I, I, I did survive. Is it safe yeah. to ask or fair to ask, what are the kinds of things that get you kicked out of four high schools and your platoon? We would just do ridiculous things. Like, <laughs> I just don't think I've ever said this one before. I don't know why I thought of this one. I actually got kicked out of summer school, which is like a whole nother oh, level. Oh, dear. You go yeah. to summer school because you got kicked out of other school, right? Like, <laughs> that's... Right. And I had not thought of this in so long. Uh, for some reason, we thought it would be funny to, we were a lot of pranks, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we had someone put a, like a cup of urine in the lemonade in the cafeteria. That was <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. I got just picked out of summer school. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, but it was, I think we were just. You know, you got to do a lot to fulfill the the boredom. You're being creative. And, yeah. <laughs> what can we do to like? But you just know. watching everybody fill those cups, I remember, was worth it though. Uh, because... <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing. I forgot about that that's, story. Thanks for bringing that's that a, up. Like, a, leave it to uh, us to bring a it to bring it power yeah. move right there. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I like you. I want to get to know you better. <laughs> like, what else did you do? Just this don't drink great. lemonade around me. Just yeah, go, yeah. seriously, you know, lemonade like, is um, danger zone. <laughs> I haven't done anything like that since I was a teenager. Okay, sure? yeah, that's okay. Not- <laughs> and and I assume it wasn't lemonade uh, uh, related incidents that got you clicked, kicked out of your platoon. You know, yeah. I imagine by the time you get to the army, you're not as much a prankster. I don't know. I don't know. We still did a lot of stuff. Um, 
<laughs> Actually, some of those I'm not even now that I'm thinking I'm not even telling some of those stories. But I um we let's see, what I got kicked out of my platoon. Oh, I remember now. Um, so we would have this thing called fire guard where you always had to get up and two people had to be awake at all times. Um it's called fire guard. And um that was when you uh so you would have shifts and so fire guard you know we were supposed to be guarding and I was never really doing that I was like I would use that as my time to like knock out taking a shower or like just anything but fire guarding and <laughs> and fire guard you're guarding for like like other for or like a, some sort of attack like yeah yeah it's not really fire I mean yeah yeah that's just what it's called you're just watching right yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, I would like wake everybody up, and it would be like my party hour. Mm. It, would, it, it wasn't, <laughs> and so you were you know, doing other things than <laughs> what yeah. you were supposed to be doing. Got it? Yeah, but that was just you know one. I mean, that wasn't the one reason, but it was just a lot of like silly things Little like things. that. You know, nothing. Yeah, but it would be silly things like that that piled up. Yeah. I, what What is it though? I mean, so you've you've been very busy since you got out of service and uh some at some ha- a point you you must have made some sort of a turn w- in your relationship with attention life. and attention seeking and attention <laughs> and life, you know yeah. and, and life like what is it that that helped you do that like you said you did not know you were living with ADHD when you're in the service and so like how, how do all those things play together well I think that after uh, you, you have enough kind of experiments with in, in life, you realize, okay, this is not, this behavior is not working out. The, the consequences of doing these things is not <laughs> re- rewarding me. Um, but it's, I feel like a lot of it, I mean, it's the same personality. It's the same um, temperament. It's the same everything that's now driving me to do the entrepreneurial ventures that I do and the creative things that I do. It's just that I'm harnessing that power in a much more productive or socially acceptable way. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just, I think as time goes on, you learn how to, to better harness that for, for good and not Mm -hmm. Not lemonade. Uh, So when were you actually diagnosed? Oh, when I was 31, so I'm 36 now, so five years ago. Okay, Mm -hmm. not too long. No, not too long ago. Uh, How how do you feel like your your day to day has has changed? What's been your initial exploration of, you know, I, I I often ask just just because I know that once you discover there's a word for how you've been living inside your brain, like th- that changes things just in and of itself. And I'm curious what that experience was like for you. Well, it did help me feel more secure that it, there's not something wrong with me. Um, because my whole life, my friends, family, you know, they've been frustrated with me and my behavior and they would, they would label it all different things, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and you know, they thought I was reckless or compulsive or, Mm -hmm. um, even, a troublemaker. You know, I mean, yeah, that is like a, this label yeah, that you're putting on yourself. Seeking, yeah. Right. Um, and so they would be very frustrated with those things. And, and it does wear on you after a while of, well, is, or am I those things? Yeah. And so I think that although even without getting a, the name, the diagnosis, I was getting to a point of self-acceptance, you know, because I had better learned how to harness it and and whatever it was, I was getting to a place of self self acceptance, but I think that it just validated it even more so. So you're a mother of two, a commercial real estate agent, and you own and operate your own nonprofit charity for the arts. That is a lot to do in a day. How how do you balance all of that? Well, I don't know if I do balance it. Um, I think that I I thrive in with the level of chaos mm-hmm. and and so I embrace it and I think a lot of people you know from the outside well I know because every time I talk to anyone they you know they're like I'm exhausted just watching you you know how do mm-hmm. you do this and and they 
they don't understand it, but I, I, I thrive in that mm-hmm. environment. So I like mm-hmm. having 50 different things going on at all times. Mm-hmm. How do you, I, I want to talk about some of the practicalities before we, well, actually, let's start with this. Tell, first of all, tell us your commercial, right? Real estate, not residential, right? Okay. Uh, my dad was in commercial for decades. And so like, I know that there is, there is a real vibe to how you manage a commercial real estate business. Uh, but also bourbon with heart. Let, tell us a little bit about bourbon with heart. What is that? Uh, well, before I do that, can I say something about the commercial real estate? Because, yeah. Yeah. um, it's funny because it's, uh, I, commercial real estate is, known for being kind of traditional dry uh, Mm -hmm. straightly so also kind of like the military it's like how would that match up with the personality and um let me just say no idea no idea how the person i'm looking at does all of these things well and so it's funny because i would say when i talk about being a troublemaker i would say i still am in some ways and but um, but I uh, like I said, I've learned how to do it a little bit better, maybe. Mm-hmm. So with commercial real estate, even you know, we do our marketing is way out of the box. I mean, it gets people uncomfortable. We have ruffled a lot of feathers. Um, it is not the. I'll just say it's because commercial real estate. And no offense to your dad, it's a bunch of old white dudes. Oh, he's an old suits. white dude. Yeah, no, no <laughs> doubt. No, that's exactly what he was. Yeah, old white dude. Uh, and it's me and my business partner is a gay man. So it's a gay man and a, and a woman. And we've really came in and shook up our commercial real estate industry here. Um, it's been a lot of fun, Great. but we've certainly had some pushback on (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) but what a great way to be able to go into an industry you obviously like for what you know whatever reasons you like it or you wouldn't be doing it what's that the money (laughs) (laughs) there's there's a there's not the there's a motivator but wait a minute because it's make it your own too though i think it's great well totally but i this is why i wanted to talk about some of the practicalities of it because the other thing i know about commercial is that the the sales cycles can be very very long and require a great deal of patience and my ADHD doesn't offer me a lot of patience. And so yours must be a really special flavor of it because I don't know how I do it. And so my, I imagine the leading question is, is that why you go ahead and start other businesses? <laughs> like what absolutely. Waiting it absolutely for sales to close? Yes. And um, because I'm, I've got some that are going over two years, you know? Yeah. Um, so yes, that is certainly why you've got to have other things to fill that that space um and i will be honest i even though i have i would say that i've gotten to a point where i am good at commercial real estate i understand it i i find ways to make it fun but i will admit i do it i do continue on with it because something has to fund my other fun projects right right Uh, so that's so there's a part, if I did it, if money was no object, uh, I can't say I would spend as much of my time yeah, doing yeah. commercial real estate. For sure. Well, because your other project is a nonprofit <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. charity right yeah, so no, no profits in the name so <laughs> yeah yeah uh but yeah tell us a little bit about this what is bourbon with heart how did it get started what is it yeah so Bear Everyone Heart is a nonprofit organization, and we say we're arts-focused bourbon charity. So we're combining my two favorite things about Kentucky, uh, bourbon and art, and <laughs> we're bringing those together in a way that's really never been done before, and people are going crazy for it. In, in Kentucky, bourbon is a huge part of our culture, our yeah. economy, everything. And art is as well, but the world doesn't know Kentucky for its art scene the way that they know it for its bourbon scene. And so mm-hmm. we're leveraging that existing popularity and influence you know, of the bourbon industry to bring that awareness, raising funds, providing access for our arts, arts community. Mm-hmm. How does that That's manifest? Great. Like what kinds, of, what kinds of events do you hold? Do you sponsor specific artists? Uh, how does it work? Um, a lot of different ways. So we had currently on exhibit, we have a bourbon barrel art exhibit. So it's painted oh, bourbon barrels. Yeah. Yeah. And that has been a ton of fun. That's on display right now through March 31st at the Kentucky Fraser History Museum, which is the official starting point of the bourbon trail, if you know okay. anything about that. Um, and so, yeah, that was painted bourbon barrels. And then we have Derby coming up, which is huge here. 
So the next thing that we're doing and the artists have already, we just completed the artist call. We've got the artist painting is a bourbon barrel bow tie art exhibit. So these are bow ties actually made out of bourbon barrels and oh, then cool. hand painted by local artists and then put in a, in a gallery on display for a Kentucky Derby. That and is amazing. So are the bow ties like, are they like wood then? Mm-hmm. Oh, how yes. interesting. So, and the, they were actually so they were actually made by a group of U.S. military veteran woodworkers who discovered that woodworking helped their PTSD more than anything. And so they actually hand carved the, the bow ties, the wooden wow. bow, bourbon barrel bow ties. And then they go from them on to the artist who then further designed them either. And, we, and it's not just paint. So we have they're painted, but we also have. Um, a blacksmith who like works in um, you know iron and metals and we have other woodworkers who then come in and maybe carve fine details into them or pyrography which is burning the designs into it so they're all going to be it's it's really layers of artists working on the same project it'll be 50 of them on display through the Kentucky Derby here and so when is the Kentucky Derby uh, the first Saturday in May. In May. So if we're not going to the Kentucky Derby, <laughs> which probably most of us are not, how can we see this? How can we, will there be a link or something that we can see photos? Like, I would love to see the work. This is so interesting. Yes. Yeah, so actually right now you can, for our bourbon barrel art exhibit, we, we're still, you can vote for your favorite design. Um, you just go to our website, bourbonwithheart.org slash vote. And the winning artist will win a cash prize and then they win a donation to the nonprofit of their choice. And then the same, it'll be the same for the bow ties when they're completed. So it'll all be on our website and our social media. And if you follow our social media, just Bourbon With Heart, we post a lot of fun stuff. We get, you know, the artists sneak peeks of their projects as they're going. And uh, it's a ton of fun. And we've raised a ton of money. Yeah. Like, like how, what are we talking? What kind of scale raising money are we talking about? Do, do you, are you giving away numbers yet? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely, uh, we're proud of them. Yeah. Um, for example, the bourbon barrel art exhibit that is only two months, we've raised $63,000. Nice. That's great. And, is- um, the bow ties should be around 25. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What does this do for you personally? Like, how did you transition from this? Like, what does this fulfill for you being involved in the arts? Do you have an arts, like, background? Are you, do you work in a lot of bourbon barrels? <laughs> um, it's fulfilled a lot of things for me. Um, more than I even thought it would when I first set out doing this. Um, but you wouldn't believe the way that, well, one, art is so satisfying because it's really bringing the invisible to the visible i mean Mm -hmm. all the ideas that are going around in your head you're you're watching them manifest you're creating it out of nothing um which is very satisfying and but then also bringing in so many other people to do the same and these are a lot of artists we work with all different artists from award-winning artists to artists who this is the first time the public has ever seen their work Mm -hmm. Um, and putting them all in the same room together and seeing what that's done for these people I mean I've had I had a 60 year old woman to call me the other day artist I've never felt this confident in my life I've never had anyone I've never been more proud of my stuff. I mean, because we like to make our artists like celebrities. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of part of our mission here. Um, And we also, I mean, for the barrels, we had a group of five artists who have Down syndrome created Mm -hmm. one of the barrels. And, you know, their families called and said, this was probably the best night of their life, you know, the opening night. I mean, people were coming around Mm -hmm. getting autographs. And and not only that, but their work was, it's incredible. Displayed. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I just love that. Yes, I I have been an artist all my life, but that feeling, it's very vulnerable to share your art. Yes, For sure. You're, you're putting yourself out and saying, basically, judge me. Yes. But then it's also so uh, the, the sense of pride when someone says, that's great. Like, mm-hmm. that's amazing. You're talented. I love that. And they, they recognize you in that way. And so being able to do that for these other people, it's 
it's immensely rewarding. Mm -hmm. But not to that, plus we raised the funds for other nonprofits. Like we cut some big checks just this yeah. last exhibit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious with your ADHD and how, and, and you said that you thrive with, you know, the chaos and everything. What on our show, we talk a lot about systems and we talk a lot about like how we, you know, uh, try to organize and structure our days so that we can get done what we need to get done. What is a typical day like for you? What are some of your systems that you use to help you, you know, stay on top of the real estate part of your life and also the charity part of your life? I'm not going to say that I do this perfectly all the time, for sure. Um, sometimes I get overwhelmed and I have melt major meltdowns, but sure. we all I do. <laughs> But I I have really gotten uh, where I have to time block the best I can for if it's real estate. I won't ha I can't have any tabs, anything open on the computer, anything that is. I have separate phone numbers for separate. Mm -hmm. um, so Bourbon with Heart has a phone number. Real estate has a phone number where I can literally shut off that that project and. Because certainly if I have a bourbon with heart um, need pop up and I'm doing commercial real estate, it's going to be very hard because it's yeah. a lot more fun to do, to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's been one thing that's been really helpful. Uh, getting the multiple phone numbers. I know that may not apply to a lot of people because mm -hmm. they may not have multiple ventures, but you, I just go on Google Voice and you just get a phone number. And so I put all my texts and all my everything in for one it, that's really Project. smart. Yeah. Makes sense because uh, then you can separate it and go back and forth when intentionally. Yes. Cause mm -hmm. if I, yeah, you don't get, then you don't get a, it's, you know, my real estate two hours and I don't get a text that you can't. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. guess time blocking is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't always do that. Right. I mean, sometimes sure. I just don't have the, the willpower to do that, but I, I, and what you guys mentioned, I have used some of the programs for the body doubling mm -hmm. when I do need to do the two yeah. hours of real estate. That helps a lot. Um, hired yeah. companies that help organize all my computer files mm -hmm. and delete things because at the end of the day, you don't have 100 new files and it's just become such a mess. So hiring people to, I know that may not be feasible for everybody, but any of those type of programs. Yeah. Super helpful. Delegate where you can, for sure. Yeah. 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 That's great. How do you manage? I, 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 I don't know. I don't want to get too in the weeds here, but since we're talking about kind of the practical day-to-day -day management stuff, how do you manage your, like your, your sort of, uh, digital versus digital and paper document system? Like, because I know with the commercial real estate, like it comes with a lot of just files, sometimes paper files, sometimes digital files. Like what, what's your process for knowing what to, what's, what's active, what needs to be archived and saved and what can be just deleted? Yes. Um, Google drive, um, all the, all the folders, everything in Google drive. And <laughs> if you could see, I have these, the Google sheets, mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're literally all named different track trackers so it's like tracking this tracking that and everything is just on those google everything that i need to do i put on a google sheet and when that's done it's highlighted you know one color i mean it's it's kind of archaic it's nothing super advanced but but it's, it's visual really, right yeah, if you're if visual. you're changing so colors color when coded. things are done yeah. that's a that's a visual stimulation that says yeah. i've achieved I've yes. achieved something. The, and the color coding, you know, kind of in progress, done and active. Yeah. That's been super, super helpful. I mean, I probably have a different Google Sheet for every yeah. thing that I'm doing. And if and I get very strict about people like following the systems I put in place. I'll use Calendly, you know, to book things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and then someone might shoot me a text message that says you know, this date or this time where, and I'm like, no, you have to go on the Calendly link. I know it sounds silly, but you have to go on this link because I will not get this done. I won't yeah. remember this will never, I'll never yeah. think about this again. And I know people get a little frustrated, but it's like, I don't force them to follow these systems. It's, yeah. 
it'll be such a mess. Yeah. 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 Right, right. It well, allows you to be me. good to, to other people. It allows yeah. you to be, that's, a, that's kind of how I look at it. This allows, this like opens the gate for me to be generous, right? Mm-hmm. As long as you walk through that gate, then I, you have all of my attention yeah. when, when you ask for it. You have all of it. Well, and I remember Pete, you asked or tell, telling me, <laughs> don't leave a voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, no. don't leave a voicemail because I won't get back to you. I won't hear it. I won't remember it. Like if you need to contact me, text me or email me, but voicemail is not the way to do it. Yeah. And that's actually worked very well. But I think yeah. part of it, I was, I've been thinking about that uh, like lately. And part of it is that I ended up in that space, like knowing that voicemail was my, it was just my downfall. Like it was just the worst at a time when texting was becoming a a big deal. Like Mm -hmm. people, people were okay saying, Oh, okay, I'll just send a text. I don't know if that would have worked, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, (laughs) me being hard ass about voicemail when (laughs) everybody was leaving voicemail, right? Like that was just the thing. So I think I got lucky, but I do know that that's where my pain points are. What are yours, Morgan? Like, where do you find what's, what is that one card that you pull out that causes, causes the whole house to fall down? voicemail is certainly one of those and in Mm -hmm. fact i wish i could play it right now so i changed my voice recording it literally says hang up and text me people still don't don't listen they still don't do it (laughs) but like you said if they don't if they don't if they don't listen then you know i i I warned them yeah this is the only way i'm gonna probably you have a chance i think my voicemail still says i love you but i won't call you back if you leave a message (laughs) (laughs) yeah well, I've had some rude uh, voicemails left because of that. Yeah. Um, because you know I am in in real estate, and fortunately, commercial does move slower, so there's not that expectation yeah. that you're just yeah. constantly, you know, twenty four seven get a that a deal those, is gonna fall through in a second. You I'll know, let those old white dudes don't really take kindly to you telling no. them not to leave a voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, and so my voicemail actually says. Um, you know, you can leave a voicemail, but uh, better yet, you you, sh- you know, should probably text or email me. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, some of the voicemails when I do finally, if I ever go back and listen to them, they'll say well, like, better yet, you pick up your phone. And I'm like, oh, okay, oh, that's saucy. Saucy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely one. And honestly, I can't even hardly handle text messages because they're they're gone they're they're down there's no way to like with an email i can mark it unread Mm -hmm. if i need to get to it later well let me just ask you though let me see if i can solve this problem what are you using right now what's your phone uh well apple iphone and and what's your have you updated the os i have okay so now on the phone you go into messages i'm gonna do a little just a little tech tip yeah, I'm going to try this. All so right, I have this list of messages here, right? And I have some pinned at the top, which is all great. I can now swipe over to like on a particular mm-hmm. market unread. Oh, so you can do it. That is brand new this year. That is oh. brand new feature this year. And it has saved my life because I am terrible, <sighs> terrible about text message too i drop the ball all the time because i can't mark it it. as unread yeah yeah you're not lying no why would i know now we all gotta try it yeah oh but see now i'm gonna see these messages right yeah yeah don't do it yet no but that's it but but i only say that because you just you just highlighted the same pain point for me and it, it it is just it is an absolute game changer and i know I know Melissa is sitting in our chat room and she's saying, yeah, Android's had that for like 10 years. I know, I know they're late <laughs> to the game, Apple, but it is it is here now. And for productivity and like not dropping the ball on alerts, that is a huge, huge help for me. To, well, so that that would be know. definitely. Yeah. So I would I would definitely implement that because that's why I I will say I'll even tell people, can you email me what you just said? Because yeah. if I don't, but now I know that I'm someone's waiting on an addendum, so I should not have looked. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! We gotta wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't be thinking about that now. But um, uh, well, uh, I, I, this is this is terrific, and and I, uh, you just so appreciate just kind of walking through your experience. Um, yeah. it, you, so you, are you a native Kentuckian? 
I am. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and what? So to go back to the bourbon with heart. Um, yeah. The the bourbon barrel, well the barrel art exhibit is one exhibit. The bourbon barrel bow ties is another exhibit. Mm -hmm. But there's lots more. So there's because uh, it's not just the visual. Uh, it's not just the fine arts, but it's also performing arts. So we have bourbon and Broadway, bourbon and ballet, and bourbon and Beethoven. Um, cool. And these are all similar concepts where we're bringing in local artists in these different fields and bringing them together with a bourbon component and raising funds. And it's a lot of fun. And we have, um, you know, Louisville Slugger is here. That's, mm -hmm. you know, most So we're going to do a art exhibit where bourbon they, and baseball. In, yeah, and they paint the all the different custom bats. Oh, cool. That is so that. cool. Yeah. What a yeah. cool thing. And and I assume, for those who are, are so interested, visit uh, bourbonwithheart.org and they can look for ways to support the organization. And if you want to support Morgan, go buy some commercial real estate. That's right. Her. That'd be awesome too. <laughs> don't worry. Long sales cycle. Don't leave a list. Man. You're going to be great. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Morgan, for being here. We appreciate you sharing your story and, and giving us uh, some new insight on bourbon with heart. Awesome. For sure. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. We appreciate your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute to this conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer and Morgan Hancock, I'm Pete Wright. And we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm -hmm.